Creating and Managing Cases To record the details of an incident and link digital evidence to it, you can create a case and then share the case with other investigators within or outside of your organization. To open a case, click on the Cases section on the left and click on the Create New Case button. Click on the pencil icon next to the case name to change it to something relevant and recognizable. The Owner field cannot be modified as you are automatically made the case owner. If you have a reference number for a case, you can enter that in the record number. To associate this case with an external reference number, add that number in the Incident Number field. When adding a new case, the status will automatically be set to active. This can be changed to closed and reopened later on if needed. Choose the case category next. Each case can only be associated with one category. The category is the type of incident, such as employee theft or shoplifting. Categories are assigned retention periods, which affect how long to keep files as evidence on the service. Files associated with the case may be affected by the retention period set for the case category. The department is the group within your organization that is responsible for the case. This is a mandatory field and you may only choose one department per case. You'll need to select the starting date and time the case incident occurred on. You can use the calendar and clock icons to quickly choose a date and time. If the incident has an end date and time, this can be selected as well. Enter a description for the case, giving as much detail as possible so others can quickly find the case they're searching for. Below the description are the tags, which are one-word keywords used during the search process to find cases. We recommend entering any synonyms or alternate wording for the case that might be used when someone is searching for the incident. For example, if you're creating a case for a theft, you can enter the words stealing and shoplifting in the keywords, since someone may use those phrases while looking for the case. To enter a tag, type in the word and hit enter to add it to the tags list. You can keep adding words and hitting enter until finished. Click on the X next to a word to remove it from the tags list. The location field is used to specify where the incident took place. You can add the location by typing in the address or clicking on the map icon to bring up a map where you can select the location. If you know the general location, you can type that in the location field and then hit the map icon to select a more specific location. Use the mouse wheel or the plus and minus icons to zoom in and out and left click and drag to move the map around. You can also enter an address from the map pop-up using the field on the top left. Clicking on the map will set the location pointer. Once you have the pin in the right place, you can click Set Location to save it. Below the location, you can see the geographic coordinates of the pin that was placed on the map, and the address will update accordingly. At this point, you'll need to assign users and user groups to share the case with. Any users in the department that was selected will automatically be assigned to the case once it is saved. If you wish to add additional users or manage the permissions, you can do so from the Users section. A user or user group can have Read, Edit, or Manage permissions. Read permission only allows them to see the case. Edit will allow them to make changes, but they cannot share the case with others. And the Manage permission level grants them full access to view, edit, and share the case. At least one user or user group must have the Manage Permission level for each case. The last step in case creation is to add files to the case. Either click on the plus icon next to the Files section header and choose a file from your device, or drag and drop the file into this section. If you need to edit any of the details of a case, click on the case in the Results list of the Cases section. From the Edit screen, you can close or reopen a case using the button on the top right. You cannot modify details of a closed case. You must reopen the case first. Only users with the Manage Permission level are allowed to reopen cases. 
Next to the Close or Reopen Case button is a menu where you can view the audit trail for the case to see if anything has been changed, or delete the case if it is no longer required. Below the last modified information, there's a checkbox which can be enabled in order to protect the case from being deleted. You can only put a check in this box while editing an existing case, not during the case creation process. If this box is not checked and a case is deleted by accident, you can restore the case from the recycle bin. Look at the Retention Policies tab of the Configurations section to see how long cases and files are kept in the recycle bin. When cases are created, users and user groups that have been added as part of the department are granted the default permission level that has been assigned to them within that department. If you need to change a user or user group's permission level, go to the Users section in the case. From the list of users, you can click on the X next to a user, group, or service to remove it, or use the drop-down menu to change the permissions for that entity. You must have the Manage permission for the case in order to make changes to the user permissions.